Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanted to discuss the anabolic properties of eating animal testicles. So if you watch this channel, you'll know that I make these videos about old school bodybuilders, right? And sometimes I will make the claim in the video that the person I'm talking about uh, trained, lived, and uh, acquired their physique in a time before steroids existed, right? Testosterone was synthesized in 1935. So it is my opinion that anyone who trained before 1935 is 100% undeniably natural because steroids did not exist. Now, I have gotten a ridiculous amount of comments um, arguing this. I mean, you cannot imagine the amount of comments. I'll put some of them on the screen now. If you want to pause, feel free to read them and amuse yourself. But basically, the claim that these comments are making is that uh, these people were not actually natural. They ate bull testicles, and bull testicles boost your testosterone. So they were basically using steroids before steroids were invented, and uh, that's why they got their physiques. Not because they trained well, not because they ate well, and not because they did all of that for many years. No, no. It's because they ate bull testicles, right? Now, in this video, I'm not going to be disputing whether or not people actually did eat bull testicles and whether or not they thought that would help their performance. The question in this video is whether that actually worked. Does eating bull testicles boost your testosterone? Is it performance enhancing? Okay, so I'm not usually one to look at studies when it comes to bodybuilding, but I thought for this specific question, um, a study would be the most accurate way to answer the question. Okay, so we're going to be looking at this article uh, published in the European Society of Endocrinology. Okay, the article is called Endocrine History, the History of Discovery Synthesis and Development of Testosterone for Clinical Use. Okay, it was published in 2019, so it's quite recent. Now, the author is this dude right here, who is Professor Eberhard Nischlag from the University of Münster, Germany, and his clinical and research activities focus on reproductive endocrinology and andrology, testosterone substitution, the aging male, male contraception, and steroid doping, okay? So I think this guy looks like he knows what he's gonna be talking about. Let's see what he has to say rather than all of these armchair Einsteins in my comments, okay? So I'm gonna link this study in the description. Feel free to go check it out, read it for yourself if you prefer, but I'll show you the part I thought was most interesting and most relevant to what we're talking about here. So this part about testes for organotherapy. So here he goes into a little bit of the history. Um, you know, the Romans were using testicles, uh, the ancient Arabic physicians were using testicles, the Chinese were using testicles since at least 1132. The universal doctor of the University of Cologne in the, you know, 12th century uh, was using hog testes in wine, okay? So uh, then here he says that even in the 20th century, in the 1920s, uh, there was a pill which was, which contained animal testicles and, you know, it was a big success. Now, the interesting part is uh, here. So, however, this, the testes synthesized testosterone, but unlike other endocrine glands, such as thyroid or pancreas, do not store its products. So, testicles make testosterone, but the testosterone is not stored in the testicles. The daily production of an adult man of about six to eight milligrams is contained in roughly one kilo of bull testes, okay? So the testosterone is not in the testicles. There's so little of it that you would have to eat an entire one kilo of bull testicles to get any meaningful amount 
of testosterone out of it. But here comes the interesting part. Even if this amount of testosterone were to be consumed, the testosterone taken orally would be inactivated by the first pass effect in the liver. So even if you do eat the whole kilo of bull testicles, it's not actually going to do anything because it gets inactivated by your liver, okay? Therefore, all testicular organ therapy administered orally can only be considered as a placebo medication, okay? It doesn't do anything, guys. It's the same as eating any other meat or any other organ. There's nothing special about testicles. They make the testosterone, but there's no testosterone in them, okay? So, um, another thing that they talk about in my comments is this uh, thing that Charles Brown Sicard invented, some kind of elixir that uh, athletes were using, some baseball guy was using, um, which is also covered here. So, I'll read you uh, this bit. Um, Organotherapy literally exploded at the end of the late 19th and early 20th century when, at age 72, Charles E. Brown Sicard, who until then was a well-reputed scientist and member of several scientific academies, published the results of his famous experimentation in The Lancet, 1889. So, what he did was he gave himself one milliliter injections of a mixture of one part testicular vein blood, one part semen, <laughs> and one part juice extracted from dog or guinea pig testes daily, and after 20 days made astonishing observations on himself. So this is what uh, this guy noticed from taking all these injections. A radical change took place in me. I had regained at least all the strength I possessed a good many years ago. I was able to make experiments for several hours. After dinner, I was able to write a paper on a difficult subject. My limbs, tested with a dynamometer, gained six to seven kilos in strength. The jet of urine and the power of <laughs> defecation became stronger. All right. So the article says, certainly all of these were placebo effects as confirmed by replication of the experiment a century later. But at the time, the world had obviously been waiting for such quackery because in no time the extracts of animal organs by the brown Sicard method were sold all over the Western world and factories sprung forth in Europe as well as in America. Okay, so this is what people are referring to when they say that they had pills or that they had steroids made out of animal testicles. They're talking about this guy, Charles Brown Sicard, who did these experiments on himself, exper experienced some placebo effects, and, you know, made a whole lot of money from selling these pills, just like you got people nowadays selling supplements that do absolutely nothing. That's exactly what this guy was doing over a hundred years ago. And all of you people who believe that these testicles actually did something, you're just falling for this, you know, quackery that this guy was doing over a hundred years ago. It has since been disproven. They've recreated the experiment and it doesn't work. Okay. It was a placebo. Animal testicles are not anabolic. Stop believing it, please. Now, the thing is, guys, I know this is difficult for you to believe. It's a difficult pill for you to swallow, but these old school bodybuilders, George Hackenschmidt, you know, Eugene Sandow, they look the way they did, guys, because they trained a lot for years. They trained really hard. That's why they looked the way they did. Maybe they also ate good food, okay? They weren't obese. They didn't starve themselves. They ate the right amount of good foods. They trained hard and they did that for many years. If you do that today, you can also look amazing, okay? You don't need steroids. You don't need crazy pills. They didn't need it. You don't need it. And that's all I've got to say for today. I hope you learned something and... I'll see you in the next one.